we kind of glanced, glazed over this here. So we go over here to texture and we touch the texture, just turn it on. And you're going to see this little plus sign over here. So you have your texture selected and you hit that plus key. That's going to throw it into spotlight. Now a spotlight open, if you go to texture import again and you bring in another image, it will import those images automatically into spotlight. So you can kind of load a bunch of images in the spotlight all at once. Uh, but we're just going to use this image here. So now that we're in spotlight, you can go in here and you can scale it down. You can go in here to opacity. And really, all I really do is the scale and then opacity. I'll drop the opacity down. Oh, another thing you could do. Uh, I'm not going to go really heavy into it because I didn't do it in this particular case. Another thing you can do is go over to your floor here and let's see, where is that at? Draw. So under your draw here, you're going to see you have your grid size and your floor and you're going to have front, back, up, down, left, right. You can go through here and you can load in your images onto your floor planes. So just like when you're in any 3D program, but Maya specifically, you can go in and like load up an image and it'll snap to your whatever plane you want it to and you can offset it from there uh, same thing in here you can load those images into your floor plane and then use that for modeling so again i didn't do that in this particular case but that's definitely something you can check out so uh, we can also go through here and this is so this is our gizmo mode our widget mode while we're using spotlight so that means i can tap on my image and it just changes where the gizmo is anchored on the image and then you know if it's anchored up here in the corner and then i do scale it's going to scale from the corner here and you can also just tap and move, or you can tap and then grab this little center area, then you can move just the widget, or if you go around the center area, it's gonna move the entire object here. So we're just gonna kind of center this object here, we're gonna knock that opacity down, and now we're just off to the races. Now, I'm gonna go off script a little bit here and talk about ways to generate really quick iterative meshes. So this isn't in the article, but we'll talk about this too. One thing you can do, is let's go okay so z will turn off um spotlight mode and now we can go ahead and model our object here so if i go ahead and hit Control d and divide this thing up and then we go in here to like our clay brush um, you're going to notice if we start clay brushing through here we're going to be picking up uh, little pieces of our spotlight and that's a feature so that's using the spotlight as an alpha um, you can also go up here, go to our standard brush, turn on RGB and turn off Z-Add, turn off Polyframe here. You can go through here and you can paint Spotlight onto our object. So if I hit Shift-Z, that's going to turn Spotlight off. So Z brings Spotlight on with Gizmo, Z toggles the Gizmo off, and then Shift-Z turns, giz uh, turns Spotlight off completely. So as we cycle through those, you can see we can paint our image directly onto our object that we're working on and we can also sculpt through it if we have z add on so we can do z add and rgb if we go over here to the, where this little led light is you can see it's going to paint and if we turn off our paint which is under subtool this little paintbrush icon you're going to see it's also pulling through as if it was an alpha so go to add out, out of edit mode let's go ahead and grab let's go to our simple brush here and we're just going to grab a plain 3d we're going to drag it out go into edit mode and we'll just size, we're just sizing this thing up. Now there's a way to have settings in here to where it's not gonna mess with your spotlight. We'll get to that in a second. But what I'm gonna do now, actually let's go ahead and just change this resolution. So if I go over here and I stretch this out, um, that'll kind of match this image here. And if I go into polyframe, I'm not making these totally square. So what I could do is go over here to initialize and change my H divides to be more. And now when I stretch it out, those will be more square. Or if I've already, initialize made a poly mesh 3d of this plane what i could do is just go over here to geometry z remesher and then just do like same adaptive size down to zero and you can just z remesh this plane it'll give you nice perfect even quads so say let's make this small so say your squares aren't that square and the reason why you want nice even squares is just to get better resolution and more predictable results while you're painting and stuff but you can go over here, hit Z remesh or same adaptive, and that'll just go ahead and give you nice even cubes, nice even squares, or you can even go in here to half and you just drop that resolution down. Might do some weird stuff to your corners here, but in this case, we can just do a quick mirror, mirror and weld. Now, mirror is under deformations, mirror across the x-axis, and then mirror and weld is under geometry, <sighs> modified topology, mirror and weld. So now you can see in my custom menu why I have mirror, mirror and weld right next to each other. So I don't have to go down here and then go find it buried in modified topology. So anyway, let's go ahead and scale this up like so. And then we'll just do a quick zero measure. Same. There you go. Nice even, uh, I keep saying cubes, nice even squares, nice even topology. Okay. So now that we have that, we can go over here, we can hit control D and all that's going to do is start subdividing this. If you don't want it to 
average your vertices down here. If I hit divide, you're going to see it kind of shrinks it all down. Go ahead and turn the smooth modifier off. Hit divide, 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 divide. I'm going to divide up to like, say, 600,000. And then I'm going to turn the smooth modifier back on just in case. That's just out of habit, but we're subdividing this up. So it doesn't look like it got subdivided, but if I turn polyframe back on, you're going to see a lot more polygons here to work with. And the reason I'm doing that is so I can go to my spotlight here, turn on RGB, and now we can just paint. And we're just using RGB here. So now we can just paint through here. Now you're going to see that little, that little string that kind of pops out behind my standard brush. That's the lazy mouse. By default in ZBrush, lazy mouse is on. So you go over here to stroke lazy mouse, you're going to see it's on, but just with one turned on. The good thing is it'll kind of even out your stroke in a very subtle way. The bad thing is you can't do like dot, 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 dot. It's not going to let you because it wants to put that little string behind it. What I tend to do is go into stroke, crank my lazy mouse up, which gives me a nice long string behind it so I know lazy mouse is on. And then I tap L to turn it off. And now I can just go through here and just start painting. Um, so when I hit L, it's toggling lazy mouse on and off. So now I can go through here and we'll go ahead and paint, 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 paint. Really quickly, just paint this on. So now if I do Shift Z, you're gonna see, now we have a plane with that image painted on it. So the problem is, and it was something I forgot to do, uh, this plane isn't Z forward. You can orient this plane in the initialized settings to be Z forward, but since I didn't, I'm just gonna hit uh, W and then hold down Shift and just, you're gonna see that white number. I'm gonna go here until it says 90. Alternatively, you could also go to your de de deformation menu and you could use rotate in here. You can just dial that in, uh, but you want to do in the Y. So you see these little little letters here. You can just change that to Y and then you can rotate it like that. Anyway, so now we're Z forward the way we want to be. I'm going to turn my floor off because we know we're Y up Z forward. And now I'm going to turn this plane into extrudable geometry that we can use for whatever. Uh, again, I didn't do this on this particular piece, but it's just another option for you guys to go ahead and use. So Here's how we're going to do it. So we've got that painted on there. We're going to go to our, let me think, masking menu. And we're going to go to mask by color. And we're going to mask by intensity. So when I do that, you're going to see my gun got darker. However, if we go to my subtool here and I turn off this little paintbrush. That's turning off colorize. You're going to see we have uh, our mask of our object here. So if I start um, sculpting on this. So we're going to, my standard brush again, do Z add. There you see, as I start sculpting, it's got it masked behind there. You could also do a deformation inflate. You can kind of inflate that behind there. So if you unmask, you're going to see that's what we're getting. Um, incidentally, that's something I use when I do wall panels. I'll do, and I did this on the Pixelogic channel. When I do sci-fi wall panels, this is a technique you can use to kind of paint concept wall panels onto a plane and then use that to kind of dictate how you want your wall panels to look. And then you can just rebuild off of that. But that's not what we're doing today. So what we're going to do today is I'm trying to find and get the outline of this image. Um, so what we can do is go down here to masking again. And let's go here to uh, mask adjust. And you're going to see we have this mask profile. And let's turn that blur down to zero. So what I can do is I can do this focal shift. We'll do like negative 75 and hit apply. And ooh, maybe not that much. Okay, there we go. Do like negative 56. Kind of dial in. So basically what it's doing is it's picking up this light gray here. So if you didn't have a light blue behind it and you just had a white background, it would do a much better job. Speaking of, let's do that. I'm going to hit Shift Z to bring my spotlight back. I hit Z to bring up my gizmo and you can see, let's go ahead and bring up our opacity temporarily. So if I bring up this opacity, you see that light blue? That's being captured in our mask. So I can go over here to intensity and I can... I can make that a little bit more intense and I can kind of start dialing that white out. I think there's also maybe like a contrast I can choose. So you can choose that contrast here. You're also going to see when I crank this contrast up, see how the black parts start turning transparent. Whenever you bring anything into spotlight and kind of ZBrush in general with the texture system, um, anything that's pure black is going to render as transparent in ZBrush. So if you bring in an image and it's got, looks like this and you can't paint, it's like, oh, gross. Go in here to either your contrast I don't tend to use contrast. What I'll usually do is uh, intensity here. And if you ever mess with this thing and you want to bring it back, I think that's, where is that at? The little backwards arrow. Rotate? No. Oh, you can also hold down shift, by the way. Uh, where's our restore? There it is. So this little restore here, you can just restore this all the way back to your original state. So let's go ahead and bring this back down. And again, just the intensity, we'll select that. I'll just make this a little bit more intense just to back off those blues a little bit. Or you can go into Photoshop before you bring it in and do it there. So if that's what we want, let's go ahead and bring our opacity back down. 
and then you could repaint this on your object. Um, however, it didn't do a terrible job, so I'm just going to back my focal shift off a little bit, hit apply, and that'll go ahead and mask this object. Now, if I hold down Control Alt and tap, or I go over here to sharpen mask, I can sharpen my mask, or I can blur my mask and then sharpen it. A um, couple different ways you can do that, and the hotkeys for that, or the shortcuts for that, I should say, is if you want to blur your mask, hold down Control and tap on your canvas. And if you want to sharpen it, hold down Control Alt and tap, and then I'll sharpen it up. But of course, we're going to want to keep those borders nice. So this is good enough for me. Let me bring up the image of the pistol here. And I'm just going to use this because, you know, I had like a white, if I do Shift Z, I have white painted here and I've got an LED over here. So if I want to make those solid really quickly, all I got to do is hold down Control and with Mask Pin, let's go ahead and mask this stuff up. So we don't, I can kind of go through really quickly and say, okay, I want this stuff masked. I can also hold down control and either mask this here or probably a better idea, just hold down control and drag out a little box. And then we can just kind of fill this in here. So any areas that didn't quite get filled in, let's go ahead and do a little bit of quick cleanup. Um, and this could probably cause a little bit of trouble in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill all that in. Uh, these are supposed to be holes. So I can, what I can do is kind of widen them just a little bit, hold down control alt. If I want to make these the same size, I can do hold down control alt uh, like this, and then I can use the space bar to move this over and just get the same size. Now, I did a terrible job, but you get the idea. And we'll go ahead and mask this part out. So now we have a nice outline of this weapon. So what I can do is go into polyframe here, hit control W, and that's going to give me a nice poly group for that object here. So if I go out of polyframe mode and turn my colorize back on, and then I do control shift, it's going to isolate just that gun off of that plane. 